heavy RP singles or top RP singles, whatever you call them, the vast majority of lifters have or will come across them at some point in the training. But what are all of the reasons for using them in training? Let's find out. Welcome back to the Strong Ambitions coaching channel. I am Norman and today we are going to be talking about heavy singles at a prescribed RPE, what they're used for and why you should not overreach them. Before we dive into the benefits of heavy RP singles, let's actually define what they are. Now, if you don't know what RPE is, RPE stands for Rate of Perceived Exertion. It is a subjective measure of how hard a weight is on a scale of 1 to 10. This scale is often used to determine how many reps you have left in reserve. For example, RPE 10 means you have no reps left in the tank, is an all-out max effort. RPE 9 means you have one more rep left in the tank. RPE 8 means you have two reps left in the tank, and so on and so forth. And the term heavy singles means doing one set of one rep at a weight that is close to or at your maximum. So a heavy single at a prescribed RPE is basically performing a single repetition at a certain level of intended intensity and that is normally between RP5 to about RP9 in most programs. So let's talk about the actual benefits of using heavy singles at a prescribed RPE in our training programs. So the first benefit is exposure to sports specificity. Now there is a principle called the SED principle, which stands for specific adaptation on imposed demands. This means that the human body adapts specifically to the demands that's placed upon it. In other words, if you want to get better at a particular task or sport, you need to train in a way that is specific to that task or sport. Now, there are three parts to this benefit. The first part is very psychological. So, you know, when it comes to approaching a heavy load, it can often stimulate a fearful or anxious response in the lifter. So having exposure to repeated bouts of heavy singles can give you slightly more confidence in being able to approach heavy weights. The second element to this benefit is the relative muscle recruitment at higher intensities. So when it comes to relative muscle recruitment, we're really talking about how much a certain muscle activates when compared to another muscle um, at a specific intensity. There is some research to suggest that relative muscle activity and the way you move in some of the power lifts are going to be slightly different when it comes to slightly lower intensities when compared to slightly higher intensities. The task of coordinating your body to moving different loads at varying intensities is going to be slightly different outside of efforts alone. So one can argue that there is a skill element when it comes to being able to perform maximal or near maximal loading. And so therefore, this needs to be practiced when it comes to your training program. And the third part to this benefit is that having exposure to heavy single can be slightly superior in terms of developing maximal strength. So as you lift loads, at a slightly higher intensity or at a closer proximity to failure, you start to activate these important muscle fibers that are more important for your strength and size gains. And these are called your high threshold motor units. These high threshold motor units are the strongest muscle fibers in the body and they get recruited when the force and tension demands are there. So if you were to do cardio on a treadmill or if you're you know, going for a brisk walk, you're not going to be activating these muscle fibers. So the second benefit of heavy RPE singles is the ability to be able to monitor your weekly performance. So when you perform a lift or when you perform an exercise, you are essentially going to be giving your body a stimulus. Now, right after the stimulus, there are two types of processes that happen. The first one is going to be the occurrence and dissipation of fatigue. And the second one is going to be the improvement and detraining of fitness. Fitness and fatigue are basically umbrella terms that encompass all the different types of effects that contribute to the short and long-term fatigue impacts, as well as the fitness adaptations. So the sum of these fitness and fatigue processes give rise to your hypothetical performance level on any given day. So within the context of powerlifting, it's going to be your maximal strength on any given day. So this is actually an important concept called the fitness and fatigue model or fitness and fatigue paradigm. And it actually underpins the vast majority of programming and periodization science. So going back to that important idea of your hypothetical ability to be able to perform on any given day, can be described in a curve called the Stimulus Fatigue Recovery Adaptation Curve. And what this really tells us is that the training adaptations that you actually create is actually reversible. So this SFRA curve is a particularly important concept specifically for the act of managing fatigue 
when it comes to programming for powerlifting. And being able to manage your fatigue well is going to be very important, especially when it comes to performing your peak and taper uh, when you prepare for a competition. So I'm going to add another important point uh, going back to the fitness and fatigue model. So there are actually various other factors that influence the processes that contribute to fitness improvements as well as fatigue management, um, including, for example, other exercises that you do that are related um, or lifestyle changes, such as, you know, if you are sleeping well or if you're not sleeping well or if you become ill. And so what this really tells us is that your ability to perform on any given day is actually largely unpredictable. So if you were to actually find out what your true strength level is on any given day, then what you would do is just perform a one rep max test. Now, the problem with the one rep max test is that there's a huge cost of fatigue that comes with it, which will reduce the um, capacity for you to be able to perform meaningful work in the short term. And this will actually reduce the amount of meaningful stimulus for you to actually get stronger in future. So for that reason, a true one rep max test is probably not going to be viable. So the other alternative is that you could just judge the RPE of your working sets, which can sometimes be of a lower intensity. But the problem with judging the RPE of your working sets, especially if they are of a lower intensity, is that judging the RPE can be a little bit more difficult. And if you do try to judge the RPE, being able to extrapolate an estimated one rep max can be a little bit unreliable. So a practical sweet spot would be to perform a sub-maximal heavy single at a certain RPE, often around between five to about eight, where you have roughly between two to about five reps left in reserve. And the reason why this works really well is because it is at an intensity that's high enough for you to be able to judge the RPE a little bit more accurately. Um, you are going to be able to extrapolate a more accurate estimated one rep max. And it's also not going to have a huge impact in terms of fatigue um, when it comes to your training sets. So the third benefit of performing a heavy single is having a potentiation effect on your working sets. So what this might actually mean in terms of your working sets is that you might be able to lift a heavier weight for your back offsets you might be able to hit your back offsets um, at a lower rp if it's a fixed weight or that you can potentially perform more reps um, in your back offsets so there has actually been a growing body of research to support the idea of implementing some sort of um, conditioning activity or post activation potentiation um, activity before strength training so within the context of powerlifting, as well as just performing a heavy single uh, before your working sets um, to prime it, you can also choose a slightly different variation in your top single that primes or reinforces a certain quality in your technique when it comes to execution. So for example, in the context of powerlifting, let's say before your working sets for your competition style bench press, you could potentially perform a heavy single at a long pause bench press or a slow eccentric bench press just to reinforce a certain portion of the movement. So those are the reasons for performing high RPE singles in powerlifting. But there is a caveat here. Heavy singles in your training can be beneficial so long as they are implemented and executed properly when you come to do your training sessions. So a very common problem among less experienced lifters in powerlifting is that they often end up overshooting their RPEs. So what overshooting your RPEs mean is choosing a weight that is actually at a higher intensity than what is actually prescribed on your program. So by overshooting your RPEs, you end up exceeding the magnitude of the intended stimulus. So this can actually lead to more stress than you would actually want. Um, and this can exceed the amount of fatigue that you really want within a certain time. And this can actually be counterproductive as it can also uh, potentially increase your risk of injury as well. So this will consequently sacrifice your training capacity in the short and potentially even long term. So in the immediate term, this may make your back offsets a lot harder than you would like. And if you have accessories that hit the same sort of muscle groups, it might even make those exercises even harder as well. And so overshooting your heavy singles may actually end up leading you to even overreach that week, which will impact the rest of your training as well. And one thing that's really important to take in mind is that just because you are physically expressing strength doesn't actually mean that you will be stronger or that you are stronger as a consequence. 
So if you overreach and you end up hitting a heavier weight, if you extrapolate your estimated one rep max, it might actually tell you that you're not necessarily actually making progress, even though on paper, you actually are making an upward trend in the actual weight that you're lifting. So you cannot actually force yourself to get stronger at the rate that you want. You only actually control the conditions that bring about the best chances for your performance to actually go up. So actually useful analogy that I often use is the analogy of the gardener. So imagine a gardener who wants to grow a flower. So what he can do is, you know, water the flower. He can, you know, put the right feed, but he cannot actually force how fast uh, and how big the flower will actually grow. He can only control the condition that allow it to flourish the best that it can. So going back to overshooting and potentially even overreaching, now, if you end up overreaching, that's obviously going to create a huge bout of fatigue, which may increase the chances of you needing to drastically reduce the training stimulus for the week after. This can create huge oscillations in terms of your progress and make it difficult for you to track and manage your fatigue on a week to week basis. And this is particularly undesirable, especially if you are approaching competition and you are performing a peak and taper to get ready for it. If you make huge oscillations when it comes to training during your peak and taper, it may make predicting you know what you actually have on competition day a little bit more difficult so i hope you guys found that useful stay tuned for my next video where i break down everything that you need to know in terms of how to stop overshooting your rpes and as always like subscribe and hit the notification 